My name is Tracy Robertson and I'm a producer, a TV producer, and I am also the CEO of a company called Hoodlum. Um, and I also go by executive producer as well. I have been running our business for 22 years. So Hoodlum was started by my best friend and I, and we've been business partners for, for that long. Uh, I started working in film and TV by doing some volunteer work so I could get some experience. Um, and because I'd studied visual art at university, um, I went through the art department um, and I sort of set about learning as much as I could about the filmmaking process. So I saw myself as trying to get as many, much experience as I could in every department. So I worked in the art department for quite a while and then I got a traineeship to be a script supervisor, which is the person that stands next to the director and basically, you know, is taking all the notes and doing everything. Because I really wanted to understand more about what goes on on set and how everything cuts together. And, and so I did that for about a year and a half and, you know, felt I had a good grasp of what was going on on set. And then we pretty much started our business. Um, I got an internship as a, with another producer for a little while and then we set up our own company and just, um, you know, bit by bit we did our own projects and learned as we went along. Okay. I have a BAVA, which is a Bachelor of Arts Visual Arts. In terms of professional development, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm always reading and I'm always part of workshops or anything, you know, and I'm on various panels and going to conferences and, you know, I try and, a lot of keeping up in my business, there's the technical side, which I kind of rely a lot on the people that I'm hiring to keep me up to date with that. And my husband is also a cinematographer, so he's very technical, so he always helps me with things like that. Um, but in terms of the business as a whole, which is really important for me, I, I'm, I try and keep up with you know, news every day or what's going on and who's, you know, who's sort of standing out, new, new companies that are coming in, that really helps me in my business. Okay. You know, there's things that I wish I'd done that I had learnt that would have made it a lot easier for me. And law would have been good because um, I don't know if I would have actually coped with doing law at uni, but it would have helped because I read a lot of contracts. Um, and I don't, right now, like we have two full-time lawyers on staff and we have a lawyer in the US, so thankfully I have a lot of other people around me right now, but there was a lot of years when I couldn't afford a lawyer that I needed to do all the contracting myself. But even just doing deals, you need to know basic principles. Um, and then business was something that I think you know, I didn't really, I didn't know how to read a profit and loss statement. I didn't really know how to read a cash flow when I first started or how to read a budget. Um, and I was, you know, I was very good at maths at school, but I wish I had some basic business skills because, you know, all of a sudden we had a board and we had to do board meetings and, um, and ex, you know, management meetings. I just, I didn't, I had to learn all of that. and running a company wasn't something that I was really skilled up on when I started. It was just my friend and I wanted to make TV. <laughs> okay. Right now, um, so I've just come back from living in LA for the last seven years. So we were based on the lot at Disney, which um, was pretty fun. Um, but we haven't been able to be in our offices since March. So. Um, so I've been working from home. Um, so a lot of what I do is develop new material with writers. And I have, we, ha we now have a fairly extensive development team. So um, we have approximately 70 projects at the moment that we're working on that we're developing in various stages. Um, and I am both running the team in America. So we have a development exec in America who's sourcing American 
based projects with American writers and dealing with um, American stories. And we also have a team here in Australia that are looking for material which is more Australian focused or maybe more internationally focused. So all of our projects sit across the UK, America and Australia. So I run that team. So my day, say if I take today, I might start by checking my emails at 5am. Um, then going for a walk and then um, and then I'll start by having Zoom now at Zoom calls but um, I can also be having you know, phone calls or conference calls with the UK or the US now um, and then when I was in the States my afternoon was full of calls with Australia and working on the Australian slate so and some of that are some of that are, are uh, really trying to keep that development moving so you know from the beginning of a kernel of an idea or a book that we find that we want to turn into a TV show or a movie is a lot of trying to keep pushing it forward so a lot of what I do is just keeping on making sure that things are moving forward um, we've just we just closed on a, a very um, it was a very big podcast that um, one of the newspapers did here in Australia, um, and it was it was quite uh, a known podcast that we've just closed on that whole um, project, and it's taken a year to pull it all together. Um, and part of that has been um, making sure that we have all of the legals in place because it's based on real people and. Um, there's been a lot of work that we've had to do to make sure everything is right in that space. And then we also have um, sold it to an American studio so that we can work with them. So there's been a lot of getting all those contracts right to make sure they're happy. So it's been a, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm doing every day is just making sure things are moving forward and closing off so that we can get things into production because that's when we get paid. <laughs> Now we make a show called Harrow for ABC Australia. So we just finished season three of that. We we um, we it, we were shooting for five months and we had to close down because of COVID. We had six days left to shoot, um, and then our lead actor Yoan had to go back to America because he had he had his kids there. So we got him back and he um, so we completed that shoot and we've just delivered that to the ABC and it will go to air in I think February next year. We also make a show for Channel 10 which is called Five Bedrooms. Um, that also closed down but we've just completed um, we went back it was in Melbourne so we luckily got um, completion of the shoot just before the second lockdown. So we um, we're working, we've just delivered that, that's going to go to air as well in February. Um, and then we are working on um, season three of Five Bedrooms, like writing the beginning parts of it. Um, yeah, so there, there are two. And then we've got a few, we've got a few projects in the US that we're working on. So we did a show in Australia called Strange Calls, which we made, I think, eight years ago and for ABC Australia and we're now redeveloping it with Fox Animation as an animated series for the US. Okay. Um, the biggest challenges would be the changing, constantly changing environment that we're dealing with right now. Um, you know, you, there are so many factors that can stop a show from happening at any point and, and it takes you such a long time to get a show into production. Some things have been really lucky and we've managed to get them into production quickly and when that happens it's like everything falls into place at the right time so it's, you know, it's rare. But there are so many things that have taken such a long time and it's a puzzle trying to get them all together. So um, that, that I say would be, it's just the, the constant pushing and you know, you, get, you come up, ag up against problems and then you have to solve those problems and then you have to keep moving. And it's always, it's problems that don't seem so big, um, but they could make everything fall apart. Um, and so that I'd say would be what is most challenging. Um, and then in terms of what makes it the most rewarding, you, know, you certainly have fun when you win 
for things. You know, we've certainly had a lot of fun going to awards and dreaming about things that eventually you do. And that, that is, you know, that is always a fun thing. Like going to the Emmys is pretty fun. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, I always feel, I feel a sense of um, pride, I think, in how you just individually that you actually get something made, honestly. Like it's, I, I know having, it's great to be given accolades, but I know that there's so many factors in how somebody wins and somebody loses that it's not just as simple, this is better than the other thing. So I know that it's a great, it's great joy when you win something, but it's also, it's, you know, it's just a moment in time as well. Um, but I think, you know, just actually making something and knowing that you've pulled it together and you've got a great team of people and everybody is really appreciative of what they're making and doing and that's what we do for our job. That's probably what makes me pretty happy. Um, standout moments would definitely be being at, at award ceremonies are fun. Um, going to the BAFTAs, because I always wanted to go to the BAFTAs, and then it, assuming we weren't going to win and then winning. <laughs> it was pretty fun. <laughs> um, I get lot, you can get lots of mileage out of that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, like I get great joy out of the fact that we have an office on the lot at Disney. You know, like I, it's a place that I never would have dreamt that I it's where I'd be, that was my office. So, you know, there's little things like that that make me very appreciative of what I do. And I have fun, I, I have a lot of fun with what I do in, you know, I, I appreciate it a lot. We've been in business for 22 years, so it's changed drastically <laughs> over that time. Um, when we First, we first started going to the US in 2007, and we st first started going to Europe, um, to the TV markets in 2000. So, um, in you can imagine the massive changes because, particularly in the US, when I first went over there, nobody was interested in anything from an international market. The America was very much about we make things, we're better than anyone else, we sell it to the rest of the world, you can't tell us what to do. And then when we first moved over there, it was because we sold a show to the US that we had made in Australia for Channel 10 and they wanted to remake it in America. And so I had had experience from about the year before where we'd sold another show that we'd made and it was sort of, oh, they just want to take it off us and redo it. And so I used that experience to say, well, yes, you can have this show, but I come with it. And so we went over to America to kind of learn how, because we thought, we've got all these skills, we can take it to America, we can make TV there. And at that time, Netflix was only a little company that sold DVDs. <laughs> and um, nobody really knew anything about the international market other than, well, we'll take their TV shows and we'll remake them in America because we can make them better. And over the course of time that I've been there, you know, and I sometimes say Netflix has introduced the rest of the world to America, it's opened up so much like you'd never have gotten a um, non-English language TV show airing on American TV and now you do. Um, it just would never have happened. They would have bought that German TV show, remade it in America and then tried to sell it to the rest of the world as an English language American TV show. So it's changed drastically because the majority of awards, the Emmys, are being won by British shows or non-American shows. And um, the majority of talent is coming from other places around the world. It's not just Americans. And so that really has really affected our industry because it's allowed us to be able to to be there and be, you know, I no longer get the, what makes you think you could make a show in America when you're not American? 
you know, it's now, can you help us find some new talent? <laughs> Do you know Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> I wonder if that would come up. <laughs> right? <laughs> Definitely having that grounding at university and the, to, to be, university won't necessarily give you everything that you need to do, you know, work in film and TV, but it will give you an overview and allow you to mature so that when you finish that you can actually start to look for positions and, and really hone what it is that you're interested in. Because there's, there's so many different jobs in our industry because you can be a technician or you can be a cinematographer or you can be a designer or you can be a costume designer so um, or you can be a producer so or a director so there's so many different ways that you can have different skills to get in so I think uni gives you those options to start looking at what it is that you're interested in um, I mean high school now is so much better than what it was when I was there in terms of skilling up and being able to learn how to put a film together. Like my son, who is doing film and TV and was doing cinema arts in the US, you know, he's all, he was screening his short, their short films at Disney. Um, it's, you know, like, so the level then when you go to uni has to be that little bit higher. And so it's, so you probably know what area maybe you want to go into. So it's skilling up to make sure that you, um, have the ability to be hired and then I still think there is a lot of merit in you know being on set and viewing how things work um, because and being helpful you know there's still a lot of we let we try and get as many people in as we can to, you know to just be there for the day or watching how things get done or being with somebody you know watching watching how the shows get put together because it really helps you to really understand how things work and it also just gets you to meet people and then that gives you opportunities because the thing about our business is opportunities come about really quickly and you need to be ready Let me know.